All right, morning guys. So this week's podcast is with one of our many successful ninjas, Faye. But Faye particularly has a fantastic story to tell, which I'm sure you guys are going to be interested to hear. For those of you listening on the live version of the podcast on Facebook, you can post any questions, etc. that you want underneath this. Just reply as a comment, essentially, as you would do an end of video, but we'll get that live as we're speaking. So first things first, good morning, Faye. How are you doing? Good, thank you. How are you today? You well? Good, good, a little bit cold, but good. It's a bit chilly, isn't it, in general, yeah. Cool, so we first met Faye, what, nearly a year ago now? May. May last year. May last year, yeah. yeah. Uh, in a slightly different way of meeting each other, uh, I actually sort of met you first, essentially. I started yeah. volunteering on a Monday afternoon at the drop-in centre, just drop-in that you work at in Macclesfield. So we'll start with that. How, how long you worked there for? Uh, I started as a volunteer myself in two. 2010 and then I've worked there since 2012 so it'll be four years this year that I've worked there. For those people who haven't heard of Just Drop In, what, what do you do there? Uh, I'm uh, a couple of things really, I, I'm a volunteer coordinator so I manage uh, all the volunteers in the organisation but that involves working um, with the young people that access us so it's a service that works with people aged 12 to 25 uh, with a variety of needs on a variety in a variety of ways so we provide information advice counseling qualifications sports hopefully soon so um, yeah loads of different things good stuff and then the Faye of May last year that I first met t- tell us a bit about where Faye was then <laughs> um, Faye well at the time actually I think I thought I was um, I kind of convinced myself that I was okay and that I was supposed to be the shape I was and you know I enjoyed life so it didn't really matter that I was unfit and unhealthy um, but then deep down I did kind of know that I needed to do something about it because I went to Slimming World so I've been in, I've a member at Slimming World on and off for years I think I first joined when I was about 19 and um, so I'd always made attempts at ch- making changes and getting healthier but just never worked. In fact, yeah, I'd lose a stone, but then I might gain three, so... The general slimming world, yeah. <laughs> yeah. MO and yeah. Yeah, cool. yeah. So you then came down, and was it, so May you started then, or...? Yeah, so yeah. I came down, April briefing meeting, and joined in May, yeah. Cool. So. How did you find it? Oh, I love it. Amazing, yeah, yeah, yeah I loved it. I was really nervous when I started, um, just because kind of going into the unknown and I didn't know what to expect so I was really like well, what were you expecting what, what did you think worst case scenario might happen um that I wouldn't enjoy it that everyone would be like you know oh yeah look at me I'm a massive fit pro person and be like oh look at her she's like really overweight and so just those kind of fears that I suppose a lot of people have that you're going to be out of place and you're not going to enjoy it and yeah, that it won't work, I suppose. It just might be another thing that won't work. Who, who else started at the same time as you? Um, I don't actually know who started at the same I'll time as me. I'll have to check the stats yeah. and teams. Uh, like Pat, well, I think they joined either the month before or the month after. after Lauren, was a couple of, Lauren and Ben were a couple of months after. Lauren and Ben were in June, so then yeah, the yeah. following month, I think. Yeah. Oh, I can't think of exactly who started okay, cool. at the same time. And then, so your first few sessions, you come in for literally session number one. How was, what was your experience with that? Um, <laughs> I just don't know what I'm doing. I've ne- like, I used to exercise a lot when I was younger, like at school and stuff, but I've never stepped foot in a gym or anything like that. So I literally did not know what to expect at all. So I just kind of walked in a little bit, looking around like, Ooh, what do I do? Um, but it was fine. I mean, coaching day, we got partnered with um, someone and just showing us what to do, like basic things. And it was fine. And I went thinking, yeah, you know, everyone's really welcoming, dead friendly, you know, at least I want to go back for the next one and cool. take a kind of session by session, really. I actually read a great thing on the internet today, someone saying that the purpose of every session is to get the person to come back for the next session. Yeah, yeah. Which makes sense, because if you do yeah. that, then eventually you'll get wherever you want to get to. Yeah, yeah. So obviously if you joined originally for your 20 pound challenge, mm-hmm. how did the first challenge go? Really good, really, really good. I really enjoyed it. Um, I lost 22, Something like that, 22 yeah. pounds I think for the first one. Um, yeah, I loved it, really enjoyed it. Um, found it, like just loved it, found it okay, didn't find it particularly 
I mean, it was difficult kind of, um, for me it was about changing my mindset, that it was a lifestyle change. So even when I first started, I thought, oh, I'll do this 20 pound challenge, you know, get me two months free and then I'll be all right. So that's when I first started. So the hardest bit for me was realizing actually, no, it's a whole lifestyle change. It's a mindset change. Um, and as soon as I started to think that, which was probably after my first challenge, but in my first challenge, I just I was enjoying it. It was fun. The food side, yeah, you know, I thought, oh God, I just do Slimming World at the same time. But you soon learn that no, yeah. you know what you're talking about. So listen to what you're saying. So what changes did you make food-wise <laughs> compared to what you'd done before? Um, I think it was learning more about like what the food does to your body and how it makes you feel like. You know, thinking oh, I can go Monday to Friday and I've been really, really good, and then oh, Saturday I can just see what I want because I've been really good all Monday to Friday. And I, I had that mindset where I did think I can, you know, I can wake up Saturday morning, I can eat this, I can go out, I can have some drinks, I can have a tea, and then oh, Sunday I feel a bit rough, oh, it's alright, I can have a McDonald's or whatever, I'll be fine because I'm good Monday to Friday again. Um, and that's why I never lost any weight, that's why I just kept putting weight on really, so learning that, no actually, that's not how you're going to, you know, make these long lasting changes. And then when, when you realise that as well, it doesn't become a case of depriving yourself, it doesn't become a no. case of not being able to do what you want at the weekend, it's no. changing perhaps what you think is yeah. an okay balance to do at the weekend, so still yeah. having a good time, still going out and yeah. having a few drinks and what have you, just yeah. not going crazy to the extent that yeah. you did before. And I think it's learning what your what your own weaknesses are. So if for me, if I drink, then I kind of like think, oh, that's when I start thinking, oh, I could just eat this, I could just eat that. So for me, I know, like when I've been on the challenges, I just don't drink. Yeah. For me, it's not that hard. I've never been a massive drinker, but when I do drink, that's when my food choices aren't necessarily as good. So if I'm on a challenge, I just don't drink, and that way I know that I'm not jeopardising my meals on a Saturday and a Sunday and then maybe even a Monday, so cool. that's It's about changing some of your mindsets as well, perhaps more so after the first challenge, but what were those mind shift changes that you took over those few months? That it's a lifestyle change, it's not just a quick fix, it's not just, oh, when you get there, you know, you'll be fine, you can go back to eating what you want or drinking what you want, that it is, you know, I've gone 28 years or whatever, learning to eat and drink in a certain way so you've got to kind of undo some of that yeah. to think well actually this is what it does to my body um, and it's incredible how you feel after you've eaten something bad like you, f you feel so like, I feel poorly and yeah. you think god is this how I used to feel all the time like poorly. you can feel like the sugar surging through your body yeah, and it amazing, sounds it? it is it and it does it makes you feel poorly I mean don't get me wrong it doesn't Put you off sometimes. I do think oh, I just want to eat this or I just want to eat that. And, you know, we always will, but yeah, it's amazing what actually when you've kind of cleansed your body and you've got used to eating yeah. in a newer, healthier way. When you actually go back, it's yeah. I think you hit the nail on the head there. I think people get used to feeling a certain way. They, they eat a certain way all the time, feel rubbishy, yeah. but just kind of convince themselves that's the way you feel, that yeah. you just get a little bit older, life's busy, stressful, yeah. difficult, etc. This is just how my body should feel, yeah. age yeah, yeah. 28 or 50 or whatever it yeah. may be. It's only when you get to the other end of the spectrum that you realise actually it doesn't have to yeah. be that way. Yeah, definitely. Because that was challenge one made to June, and then it was challenge two straight after, was it? No, no, it was, um, so July and August I had weddings, I would had holidays, so I put I think I put five pounds back on over those two months. So September, I obviously had to get that back off again. And then my second challenge was October, November. Cool. And what was the experience like with that one, similar to the first one? I enjoyed it even more. Like, really kind of got into it. That's when I started thinking a bit more about, um, you know, I can lift a bit heavier or mm -hmm. I can, um, you know, vary my food a little bit more. I, I, started to enjoy it a lot more and I was on a bit of time pressure because I was going on holiday at the end of November so I actually had to do it in seven weeks not eight oh, weeks okay. I had to weigh in early and um, so I kind of I love setting myself a challenge and if I set myself a challenge I'm one of them people that I'll do it I'm not just gonna you know give it a half-hearted effort 
like weighing in halfway after four weeks. Oh. If I see that, um, you know, I'm not only nine pounds down, then I know I've got to step it up again. And I know I've got to do more, push myself more, eat better food. There's always something that can be done to kind of make sure you're going to get there. And I wanted to get there. I knew I was going to get there. So. Days. Yeah. So that was October, November, and then stood stillish over Christmas. Yeah. Just fair enough. That's yeah, yeah. But well, I was quite impressed. I had two weeks, all inclusive in Mexico, first two weeks of December, yeah. then two weeks in of Christmas. Enjoyed Christmas, um, and again I put five pounds on in December. So I thought that's okay. And I think that's when I thought, well, maybe actually, because I thought I'd put well more on. I thought, oh my God, I'm gonna have put loads of weight on, this is going to be really bad. Obviously the UK average is gaining, gaining £12 on Christmas and, I've done and that you had a holiday, put, so you're at least £7 better off than I've put a stone on before yeah. over Christmas. <laughs> I, have, quite normal. I have, yeah. yeah. So, uh, yeah, so I think that proves that my mindset had changed. So even though I knew I'd, yeah, I'd enjoy Christmas and I'd been you know, bad or whatever, I actually haven't been as bad as what I thought I would have been or what I used to would have been. So that just proves that your mindset has changed and even though you might be going out, you know, enjoying yourself at night, you've still had a good breakfast, a good lunch, yeah. drinking all your water. Uh, so yeah, I was quite impressed. Like, and the last thing ultimately happened. with Christmas is that the number of nights out you have or, or meals that you have at Christmas is only ever going to be five to ten or so. Yeah, yeah. So as long as you keep it to those five to ten meals and nights out, there's only yeah. so much that you can do. Yeah. It's when each of them becomes then the three days worth yeah. of badness that it yeah. becomes an entire month, which is when it becomes the twelve or more pounds. Yeah. And the, the funny thing is that it's amazing amount of people over the years I've spoken to just can't see that that's optional. Mm. In theory you can lose weight on Christmas. I'm not saying realistically you're gonna, but no, yeah you can you can and I have said to people who've gained a stone on Christmas <coughs> and just been like, Well it's Christmas, what what else could it be? Yeah. I remember one of Matt's friends when we first opened the club, he gained, I think it was at 18 pounds in a week on a lads all inclusive holiday. And he was like, well, it was a lads holiday. I, could, I couldn't not. Oh and I was like, well, you couldn't do it. And he went, well, no, I was on holiday with the lads. And he just couldn't see yeah, that, that it was an option. Like, maybe realistically he was always going to get something because the lads yeah. holiday is different to normal. but. He perhaps could have got away with gaining four pounds yeah. because that's still quite a lot. Or even seven pounds. Like, yeah, yeah. That, that would have been a huge step in the right direction. Maybe. You yeah, just couldn't see that difference. It was good going, that wasn't it? Yeah. Uh, and then obviously your third challenge. Then I remember you saying you thought it was borderline as to whether or not you got another twenty pounds to lose. So you decided to see and either be a twenty pound or a beach body challenge. Ended up being a beach body challenge in January, February. That would have been yeah. Good, yeah. Cool. And for those people who don't know, the beach body challenge is getting down to sub sixteen percent body fat if you're a woman sub 10% if you're a man. It's basically people who've got that last little step to take but less than 20 pounds. So the idea, which is exactly what you've done, is that you can do 20 pound challenges until you're within less than 20 pounds or 10 or 15, 10 or 16% and then use a beach body challenge to finish it off, which is exactly what you did. Did you find the beach body challenge any different to the previous two challenges or was it just more of the same business as usual? Um, no, I didn't really find it different. Um... Yeah, it was, again, following on from the first two, I enjoyed it more. Um, I did kind of think at the beginning, is it going to be harder? Um, you know, what am I going to have to do to kind of, because I'd completely forgotten about weight at that point. The first couple of weeks, like you said, I thought, oh, I'm going to do a £20 challenge. But when I, then I thought, no, it's not. It's a beach body challenge. So it was just about body fat. I didn't care what weight it was. Um, so it was kind of, seeing it from that different side, what else you need to do to kind of push yourself um, to make sure that you're losing the body fat. Um, and I enjoyed it just as much, like I said, so on the other ones I set myself a challenge and I thought, right, what have I got to do to get from where I am now to there? Pla like, I didn't necessarily, like you said, I didn't necessarily just deprive myself. I still had, um, had a university reunion halfway through, so I thought, right, that's, I, I've got a plan for that. I know. I don't want to go and not drink and you mm -hmm. know yeah. not enjoy myself, but I don't want to leave that weekend thinking oh, I've blown it now. I've just blown the yeah. whole thing. So I planned to be able to enjoy that, and I did enjoy it. Um, but it didn't, you know, s set me off track of the end, the end target. I just thought I'd get back and push yourself harder and just make sure you do it. And you hear fairly comfortable. Was it fourteen and a half percent you ended up at? 
Yeah, 14.9. 14 14.9, yeah. 14 yeah. so comfortably under the 16. Yeah. Um, so last week, on I think it was Tuesday, so exactly a week ago, I published a blog called How Faye Did It. Yeah. Uh, because you mentioned that you've had numerous people, both non members and members, asking how you did it, how you got basically 60 pounds off and yeah. went from 29.9% body fat down to 14.9. So obviously some people kind of know this answer already because I mentioned it in the blog, but how did you do it? What, what did you do? Why? Big secret. Yeah, what's the big secret? <laughs> I listened to what you said. It's, there's no secret about it. I just did everything that you said. Mm -hmm. I'd listened to it, I'd absorbed it, and yeah, I kind of questioned it sometimes thinking, that right? Surely I can do it like this, but no, just listen to what you said and did what you said. That's, cool. That's so if you had to give a bullet point summary, so if someone said literally, can you write back on the on the back of a packet of cigarettes or a stamp or whatever, that the what of what you did, how would you define and describe what you actually did? Drink enough water, get a good breakfast every day, and then every meal you correct ratio carbs, fats, proteins. Cool. Yeah, that's not too far <laughs> off, is it? A turn up few sessions. A turn up few sessions. Yeah. See, that yeah. I don't even think that yeah. Come to your sessions. Uh, that's pretty much all it is. And I mentioned many times in blogs that it's human nature. I know I do it because I, I do it. By myself doing it with other things to overcomplicate things. Mm -hmm. Because if you overcomplicate something, then it almost gives you a bit of an out. But the reason I'm not losing weight, the reason I'm not earning more money, the reason I'm not more successful at this, that, and the other is because I don't know what to do, or it's too complicated, or it's too difficult. Whereas actually, in a lot of things in life, the what to do is actually pretty simple. Not necessarily easy, but it's, it's never quite as hard as we like to make it in our heads. But when we allow ourselves to think that gives us that, that out, that justification yeah. for doing it, that's why we're not achieving it, not yeah. because we haven't just done the things we need to do. Mm -hmm. And like I said, that's really all we need to do. Yeah. All, all we've done here is, I don't think we've got anything fundamentally different that can't be done elsewhere, but we've created an environment where people find it relatively easy to do those things and they get swept along with that collective dynamic as well. Like I said, there's, there's no secret. I, I could literally, when people email asking what we do here, I could probably write a one-line reply that pretty much summarises it, yeah. and they could, in theory, go away and do that themselves yeah. for free, but generally speaking, don't for, for a myriad of reasons. Yeah. What's been the, the reaction then of, of friends and colleagues and families of the new Fay? I can't believe it. Just... I get, I get comments every day and I'm not used to it, I find it a little bit weird still because to me I'm just the same person, obviously I've lost weight but like, people are just gobsmacked, just mm -hmm. can't believe the difference, uh, you know, even people that see me every day and then, you know, sometimes they say it's a little bit harder to see the change because you see yeah. it in a, you know, a more a day by day stage but yeah, everyone's just Dead proud of me, dead proud of that. People say it to me all the time, just how proud they are. Are you dead proud of yourself? Yeah, yeah. I, can't, I, I always smile when I think back to where I was last year and where I am now. Like, there's always going to be stuff that gets in the way, but yeah, I can't believe it. Super proud of myself. Because your birthday, this is it Thursday? Friday. Friday, Friday this coming week. So the Faye of about to be 29 yeah. is a very different Faye to the Faye of. 28. Totally different. And also, just thinking about it, then uh, in amongst all that as well, you've obviously got engaged as well, haven't you? Yeah, when yeah. New Year's was it? No, uh, October. So it was, oh, half, right. it was halfway through my second challenge. Okay. I got engaged, got engaged the first of October. For Halloween? Yeah, it's our anniversary. Right, so okay. uh, that's why it's Halloween, yeah. Well, that's good to say. That's a good usual time to get engaged. Yeah, no, no. Why not? No, yeah. So, all in all, it's just been. It's the best year of my life, these last, I know it sounds so cheesy, but the last 12 months have been the best year of my life, really. Good stuff. And how the wedding plans coming along, what's the latest with that? Yeah, good. Uh, we're hoping for September next year. Um, we've got two venues that we like, so just doing a bit of artery and prices, but uh, yeah, it should be booked. Will it be a Halloween wedding? Impossible. No, it's going to be September. It's going to be September. Go ghost themed? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> fancy dress. Yeah, That's yeah. where we met at a Halloween party, so. Yeah. Perfect. Cool. So for anyone out there who's listening who perhaps is like the Faye of a year ago, who wants to do something but for whatever reason hasn't been working for them, they're trying different things, etc. What would you recommend to them? It doesn't have to be coming here. Just in general, what would be your, your recommendation as to what they should do? Um, I think you really have to be honest with yourself and really kind of, you know, just sit and think what 
what is it I want to achieve? Do I mean, I don't think there's one person that can say they are genuinely happy with how they are when they're overweight, unhealthy, unfit. You can convince yourself you are, but you're just not. So that's my tip, is just to be honest with yourself about where you actually want to be and, you know, think about what I'm going to do to get there. Yeah. What is it that I'm going to do? That's, that is pretty much it, isn't yeah. it? Yeah. And we're often saying in the blogs and all that, but I think some people perhaps are happy when they're overweight. Maybe they are, maybe they aren't, etc. But that's their decision to make, ultimately. But the key is to actually decide if that really is the case. Yeah. There are definitely at least a... A good proportion of people, I think, who are kidding themselves essentially yeah. that they are, and when they make that change, they realise. And it, again, perhaps it's just a. It's almost like when you slip into a warm bath. It, you notice it to start with, and you just soon acclimatise to it. Yeah, and it's yeah. the same with when you're gaining weight. You just you just get used to it, and it doesn't feel that bad, etc. But it doesn't necessarily mean it's where you want to be. Yeah. Um, in terms of mindsets and all that, you mentioned obviously about questioning whether you are really happy and looking at what we need to do. What, what other mindset shift changes have you taken that potentially people listening might benefit from considering? Um, quite a few things really. I used, I used to be one of the people that thought that exercise was nothing, that it was all about, you know, you needed to do a slimming world or a Weight Watchers and mm -hmm. you'd be fine eating, you know, pasta by the bucket load and it was okay to listen to what <laughs> like the slimmer world, the group I used to go to, the woman who did it, she was well overweight, so why am I listening to her mm -hmm. advising me on what I need to do to be, you know, healthier and lose weight? So that was a kind of mindset that, you know, listen to someone else, listen to someone who's got experience, who has done it themselves, not someone who needs to do it. Um, Exercise is important. Yeah, I know all your results don't come from exercise, but in terms of things like your um, your emotional health, your emotional well-being, and your mental health, and things like that, obviously working when we do that's really important to me. But you know, if you f when you eat bad, you feel bad, and when you feel bad, you're more inclined to eat bad. Yeah. So it's just a vicious cycle. Yeah. So, but exercise, you know, it it is a key to to making those changes even though all your results don't come from it. Um, food, just how mindset that, you know, there were so many nice, how, I mean, I'm a Greek person, like people say like, that. I, I eat loads. Oh, well, I Is do, it? I do, and I used to think that, you know, you need to stop eating as much and just because I've got a bit of green veg on the plate, it's all right or whatever, but no, it's not. Your mindset that there are loads of different foods out there, you can do loads of different things, your taste buds change immensely. Yeah. Like, if you ever think, like, I think it was, I don't know, on one of my challenges, I was dying for a Chinese, and I thought, I really want a Chinese, and I had one, and I was eating it, and I was like, this tastes like crap. Like, mm -hmm. This is, it just tastes like crap, it was just nothing that, I thought it would be, yeah. whereas I would much preferred and much enjoyed a, a healthy meal. I, I randomly had fish and chips a few weeks ago for the first time in, I don't literally don't know how many years. We went, it was my wife's family internments to bury the ashes of her grandparents and her uncle. We went out for a nice meal afterwards, and um, as part of the set menu, there's a few different options. And I thought, oh, actually, I've, I've not had fish and chips in a while. It was a really nice place, so I knew it would be really nicely done. It wasn't yeah. like going to a, a chip shop or anything like that. And it was a good quality fish and chips, which I didn't massively enjoy. I was kind of disappointed because I thought, I've literally not had this in however many years. I would, I would enjoy this. Yeah. And I didn't hugely. Yeah. Yeah. Like I said, your taste has change. And, and a big part of that, what you alluded to there is that I think people often, again, it's a belief that helps protect them from the decisions and choices that they're making, is people choose to believe that healthy eating is limited, it's boring, mm. it's restricted, etc. But You've got a near infinite number of different combinations of meals. You've got dozens of meats, dozens of fish, dozens of vegetables, dozens of fruits, dozens of nuts, dozens of pulses, dozens of different cooking methods. Yeah. By the time you multiply all those different combinations up, you've literally probably got thousands of different meals. Yeah. You can go a number of years without having exactly the same meal again, yeah. if you use a bit of imagination. Yeah. Whereas, funnily enough, I find actually the people who say healthy eating is boring and restrictive probably actually have the same half a dozen meals yeah. On the cycle. Yeah, yeah. They have the same breakfast every single day. Yeah. It's yeah. cereal, toast, etc. Which, yeah, they just want to do that's fine, yeah. but that's a third a sandwich of sandwich for lunch every day. Sandwich for lunch yeah. every day with a pack of uh, low fat crisps yeah. and a bag of Coke. Yeah. And again, if that's what they want to do, that's fine, but how is that not restrictive and yeah. boring? 
and then they might have slightly more variety in their tea, but again, I don't actually think I've ever met anyone who talks about healthy food being restrictive and boring who doesn't actually eat quite a restrictive and boring diet as it is, yeah. just an unhealthy one. Yeah. Just before we move on to the next thing I was going to ask as well, those people that are listening live on Facebook, which seems to be loads of you, if you've got any questions, feel free to post them underneath. We've only got about five more minutes or so, so post any questions you've got as a comment underneath this video, in the same way that you normally would do with, with a normal video. The thing I was going to ask you about was exercise-wise. You said, I didn't realise you hadn't exercised before. I kind of assumed that you'd maybe done gyms and all that. In the past. No. Tell us about what the, the Faye of today is physically capable of doing that the Faye of a year ago wouldn't have been able to do. Oh God, loads. Um, Sit-ups, push-ups, deadlifts. What are you deadlifting now? Uh, the heaviest one, yeah. 64 kilos. Yeah, I did. On the last coaching day, I could do five of those easily. Five reps, 64 kilos, awesome. Yeah. Um, even like running, I hate running. Like even when I see it on the board in their sprints, I'm like, oh god. <laughs> but I know we've got to do it. But even that, I find you know, I've improved running, cardio, everything. Everything's improved. Everything. And how does that then carry over to everyday life? What do you find, and when do you notice and see the benefits of those changes? The first time you'll know this being in my work going upstairs stairs. to the top floor. Yeah. So everyone always complains when they come in that there's loads of stairs. This three floors, so that yeah. six flights of stairs or whatever, and running up to the top, you'd, you'd be knackered, you'd be like, oh my god, whereas now it's just Easy. no difference. Yeah, so that was the first thing I noticed in terms of uh, being healthier. Um, loads, like just walking about everywhere, everything, just generally never get out of breath, well, I do get out of breath, but not, you know, from everyday tasks like walking upstairs. Um, Running around with my nephew. Um, How old's your nephew, do you say? It'll be six in April. Yeah, so you need better energy to keep up with it. Yeah, yeah. Loads, just loads of it are unhealthier. And then where do you see it going? Where do you see the 30 year old Faye being? Um, in a, I can't imagine, it's hard to think how can I be in a better place than what I am now, but I, know, I think I will be, so. Mm -hmm. I'm going to start next door, um, start thinking about lifting a bit heavier and I have been thinking about what's next, what are my next goals and stuff like that, but I'm just thinking I'm just going to enjoy where I am for now and yeah. And, and then, uh, so what have we got, a year and seven or eight months, you should have some fantastic wedding photos. Yeah. Yeah. Probably worth it just for that alone, wouldn't I know, it? yeah. Well, that's it. I mean, people have said, like, God, you don't even need to think about losing weight to fit a new wedding, to fit a wedding dress now. And I'm like, I've never even thought of that. Like, I didn't need a, yeah. an end point. I didn't need a... I mean, we all have goals, but I didn't need to say to myself, right, I need to lose weight for this day. I, I needed to lose weight to be a healthier, fitter, happier person, uh, which is why I think it's worked, because that's why... I, I've done it. I've done it for me and my life, not for a wedding day or... I think that, that is often a big thing as well. That the reason that someone chooses to do it has to be the right reason. And it varies person to person. There's no right or wrong as such. But I think often when people feel they're doing it for somebody else's reasons or somebody else's time frame mm -hmm. or because other people have an expectation of them doing it for a certain reason, so for example, for a wedding or something like that, it doesn't mean they don't try, but it's never quite the same, they've got quite that same <coughs> level of commitment that you obviously had there when you decided for your reasons yeah. and the thing that you needed to do. So guys, let's know, we've got the first question coming in. Uh, Ronnie Beaver, what's your go-to breakfast? Uh, chicken, strawberries and cashew nuts. And that probably sounds mental to those people. <laughs> yeah. I love it, I love it. That's what I, 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 I try and get variety, but that's what I do have um, as my go-to thing, yeah. Just a cut chicken, leftover chicken from Sunday, strawberries, cashew nuts. That's and um, what did you have for breakfast before? Today, chicken. No, before, like no, a year. Oh, right? um, if I ate it, I didn't necessarily always eat it. Um, I don't know, I've never really eaten cereal, so that wasn't a big thing for me. Toast, uh, biscuits, <laughs> um, yeah. Cheese on toast, beans on toast, mm -hmm. bread, a lot of bread, never really cereal, it was those things. So a couple of points there. Firstly, 
those people listening to this who aren't aware of something to recommend will probably think that's the craziest breakfast they've ever heard of. Yeah. And that's it's just, not. it's not. It, it is from our modern society's perspective because we're all so used to breakfast being a certain type of meal, being. Right, guys, apologies to those listening uh, live on Facebook. We just lost connection there for a second. So, some of you may jump on this video, but most of you won't, unfortunately. But obviously, if you're listening on the recorded version afterwards, you'll still get this. So, we're just talking about breakfast, and, and firstly, how in our society, the sort of breakfast that we were recommending there sounds crazy. Um, but there's no reason why it's not. It's just what we've become used to as a, as a breakfast. What our society deems to be a normal breakfast isn't really what is best for us. We spent millions of years evolving successfully from being monkeys to space travel on a similar sort of breakfast to that. So when we were cavemen, it was the whatever mammoth was left over from the night before, whatever nuts, berries, etc. we could forage, vegetables we could get hold of. We didn't have access to cereal as we understand it now until around about 100 years ago. Even the bread that we had thousands of years ago was very different in terms of structure and what it gave to us and what it did to our bodies compared to the bread that we have nowadays. Our bodies are designed to function on, on that sort of breakfast. And it's an adjustment, isn't it? Yeah. It's a change, it's a bit weird to start with. Yeah, yeah. And I reckon out of all the conversations I've had with people over the years, the one where most often they stop and look at me like I'm crazy is, is when I tell them about breakfast. Yeah. People are like, chicken. Yeah. For breakfast, that's crazy. but. Wouldn't you make that change? Yeah. No going back, presumably? Yeah. No, no, not at all. Not at all. I mean, a start for breakfast, I started with like eggs and bacon, because yeah. to me that was more breakfast food. Eggs, bacon, and mushrooms, tomatoes. Um, but then, like I said before, as your taste buds change and you get used to different things, yeah, a little bit of chicken, and berries. And the second thing that you mentioned there when you talked about your breakfast that would be of note was the fact that you often cook chicken at the weekend yeah. and then use that then to make your breakfast which obviously makes it a lot easier so people often put off the sort of breakfast that we talk about because they do require a bit more time and mm -hmm. effort than a bowl of cereal mm -hmm. it isn't that much more time and effort you know even cooking stuff from scratch might only be a handful of minutes which is probably the best use of a handful of minutes you can do i'd, I'd much rather someone spend a handful of minutes having a good breakfast then did a workout. Yeah. But I nice you could do both, but that would be the bigger win. But if you've planned ahead and you've made stuff at the weekend or made more than evening meal the night before and took a word up or what have you, then actually you're literally talking a couple of extra minutes. Yeah. It might take an extra minute to microwave it. It doesn't take long at all. If yeah. you think about it, if you had toast before, how long it takes you yeah. toast to toast, your bread to toast. Yeah. Um, like yesterday, I just had leftover veg in a frying pan. 60 seconds to heat it through with a bit of cold chicken, yeah. and that's it. Exactly, yeah. It's about being smart with it. Sure, if, if you literally wake up and want to cook a full meal from scratch, that will take longer yeah. than toast and cereal, no getting around that. But if you're smart, you plan ahead, you batch cook, you have things ready, then again, it's a little bit more time, but it's the difference between, let's say, from putting the toast on to putting your plate in the dishwasher, it probably takes 10 minutes. Mm. From putting your pan on to putting your plate in the dishwasher, it probably takes 15. Mm. So it's an extra five minutes, it's literally 300 extra seconds, mm -hmm. and out of all the use of five minutes someone could possibly have in a whole day, I'd say that was their, their biggest yeah. win. Uh, for anyone that's just rejoined there, just last minute or so, as a few of you found the new uh, recording here, any last questions you've got for Faye? So anything that if you were here with Faye now, or you're down the pub with her, and you're wanting to, as most people do, pick her brains as to how she's done it, what might you ask her? Just give it the last couple of seconds for those that have found the new video. Doesn't seem to be any questions, and hopefully we haven't missed any off the previous video, which unfortunately got um, disconnected a few minutes ago. Any last words of wisdom for anything else that you think people listening at home would be interested to know from you and your story? Um, just listen to what everyone says, use the support of you guys, the other ninjas, just you know, and enjoy it. And if you're not enjoying it and you're not sure of anything, just ask. That's what everyone's here. They're here to help, not to judge. Um, whether that's whether it's your first day or whether you've been here, you know, I've been here since May and there's still stuff I don't know. There's still support that I want to get from other people and other other ninjas and you guys. So use it. Oh, good stuff. You have got a quick comment there from Tina who says you look fab. I presume she's aiming it at you, Faye. It'd be nice if you said both of us, but anyway, right, guys, hope you enjoyed listening to that and found it useful. Faye, thank you for your time. Thank you.